uh, what are the upcoming uh, milestones, expected milestones? And I think um, there's one in particular I'd like to talk to you more about, but leading up to that, uh, of course, is like, what what are some of the tests here on the way? So is it the static fire, uh, the, the, the fully stack with the two stages? Uh, will there be, uh, and then all that leading to an orbital launch test? Uh, what so? What are the things we should know about? And when do you think, like, what what do you think the timeline will be with like the orbital test? Timeline. Uh, the reason we have this website, the expected milestones, is because I always tell people to ignore any time you ever hear for any of this stuff. Yeah. And just pay attention to milestones because when you're doing stuff for the first time, you know, you just have no idea. So j just to understand <laughs> the expected milestones here, the first column is the event, the the second column is the date and status TBD complete. Green means what? Green means it's been completed and it shows the completion date there. And the completion date. Yep. And then the others, maybe, <laughs> maybe more, maybe not for the full, <laughs> full stack testing, the D stack and the, there's a 33 engine. So, so realistically, we're expecting them to de-stack. And SpaceX, I think, just tweeted that, actually, that they're going to be de-stacking um, the second stage from the first stage, kind of get the ship safe while they test. Because they don't want to, you know, 33 engines is pretty high risk if they mm -hmm. do blow up the rocket. It, when they test it for the first time, it's not going to be fully fueled, I don't mm -hmm. think, at least. But there is a limit to how they do have to have it weighed down enough that the launch clamps can hold onto it. Because mm -hmm. <laughs> if you think about it, like, Normally the launch clamps are holding onto an entire rocket weighing 5 million kilograms, 5 million, ki like it, you know, it's weighing it an insane amount. So those clamps don't actually have to hold 75 mega newtons of thrust. They really only have to, have to hold down 25 mega newtons of thrust. You know what I mean? They're not designed to hold down all 75. Mm -hmm. So they do have to have enough weight on the rocket. So that, so even when they do these, the testing of the 33 engines, It'll have to have enough propellant in there that they don't exceed the clamping and the holding force of the stand. Otherwise, it'll break free from the launch stand and that booster will go flying off uncontrolled. So it's a difficult thing to figure out in the test how many uh, simultaneous things you test, right? It's, so they're kind of mitigating risks, which yeah. is why like they're de -stack, You know, they don't want to have, although the ship could be on top of it to help weigh it down and, and simulate the, you know, the launch environment better. At some point, they, that's a risk they're just going to take when they go for launch. And so for now, they're taking the ship off in case something goes wrong during the 33 engine test. And then once we see if the 33 engine test goes well, hopefully we see the, the second stage get stacked back on it. We'll see them get closer, like closing out all the items. And hope the big one too is the FAA launch license. There, that's a, That'll be publicly filed. We'll see that it, you know in the system uh, having a launch license. And I, I have no sense of that type of thing. You know, that's outside of, but that's, but that is a big milestone. And it might be something that could potentially hinder, uh, you know, hold up the launch date, would just be waiting for a launch license. Yeah, I'm sure there's a lot of fascinating bureaucracy and politics and uh, legal stuff and all that kind of beautiful, magical thing when you live in reality. Uh, because <laughs> it is, I mean, it is a big uh, rocket. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, and the biggest thing, it's not so much, the FAA doesn't necessarily care about the success of the rocket. They did really just care about the safety of public and public property, you know. So it's 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 a matter of being convinced and having the the data to prove. Okay, if this thing blows up, we have a control of how and when it blows up. We have control of, you know, X, Y, and Z. Here's the potential damage. Here's the blast radius. You know, this again is over twice as powerful and twice as much potential. Actually, it's it's a lot more potential for uh, an explosive energy. If it, you know, where it happened to, well, the, the, let me walk back a little bit because in order to have a real detonation, you have to have a perfect mixture ratio of, of your fuel and oxidizer. Mm -hmm. um, if when a rocket blows up, typically, you know, it kind of unzips and some of the fuel will mix into some of the oxidizer and you could have some explosive energy, but a lot of it's actually just a, a deflagration. It's just, you know, flames and, and yeah. there will, there would be explosive energy, but it's not like it, you're lighting all of it simultaneously. It's this giant bomb. It's just really not. So that's good, but at the same time, even in those circumstances, the amount of energy is still absurd enough to likely blow out windows, you know, for miles and miles and miles, including my studio space. <laughs> uh, they, well, if the cameras hold up, <laughs> it will be one heck of a show. Uh, exactly. Hopefully, of course, would not uh, would not happen. So, how does that take us to an uh, orbital launch? When do you think that would happen? In in my opinion. 
Yeah. Uh, this is a very fluid, and this will change literally by the hour. So you really think that it's very difficult to really say, like, oh, even even for something that could very well happen this year, even just a few months away, um, you and, making a prediction. Uh, by the way, are you like superstitious on this kind of stuff a little bit? Like, no. you don't you're worried about jinxing it no, and that kind not of stuff? At all. No, because um, <laughs> I would imagine you would be like waiting for all of these launches that keep getting delayed, where you start thinking that there's certain things you do will control the weather. My socks. <laughs> Is I am it, wearing these socks, socks. I just scrubbed again, you know, like, yeah. You're lucky, you have to wear the same lucky socks, otherwise it's going to, there's going to be bad weather. <laughs> yeah. So the reason that I say this and why it's so difficult is they did a first full stack test in July of 2021. And the expectation was we're a month or two away from a launch. Yeah. So like realistically for 18 months, I've been in a, in a purgatory thinking that we're a month or two away of an orbital launch. Now I did say for the record, when that thing stacked and when a lot of speculation was saying, you know, a month or two, I was saying, I don't expect it to fly in 2021, you know, and I've been just say, I just saw the amount of work that still needed to be done. Like on yeah. the, the ground systems, the tanks, the the launch mount, all the stuff I'm sitting there like, there's still a lot of stuff. And they're gonna have to validate it. They're gonna have to test everything, every component. And, you know, people were like, how dare you say that? Even Gwen Shotwell, the president of, of SpaceX is saying Q3 of 2021. I'm like, okay, but like, I'm just, I'm not going to be surprised if it slips into 2022. And here we are the beginning of 2023. And I, I think we're finally within like two months. I, I'm expecting, like, I'm trying to keep my March and April as free as I can. We'll put it that way. <laughs>